Behind me is the oldest purpose-built University of Waterloo building. I think it was designed in 56. The drawings have a date label of 1957 and construction was complete by 1958. So this is right at the beginning, the first building that was used at the University of Waterloo. Now, I call it Engineering One, but it actually has been renamed many years ago as the Douglas Wright Engineering Building. And Douglas Wright was a, an important dean and president of the University of Waterloo. You'll see that the, a lot of the design features are very similar uh, to other buildings on campus. In fact, you'd swear it was identical, this part of the building, to the physics building. Uh, and from far as I can tell, it is identical. But you'll also notice that like the uh, physics building, there is going to be a lot of maintenance required or a complete redo of this building on the books. Thanks. These window units uh, inserted from uh, floor to floor uh, are actually windows, not curtain walls. And there's a precast concrete made to look a bit more like stone that is inserted to mirror the floor behind. Uh, as you can see, that concrete is starting to fall apart uh, and that's because of mostly where water gets at it and freeze-thaw damage happens. And uh, so you see this often below windows or at the edges of windows. Uh, this particular window, you can see that there, the spandrel panel is starting to corrode. This has been repainted once, but it's starting to fail. Uh, and you can see the sealant at the bottom also beginning to fail. Um, this has, this coating has been put on the outside. Uh, that's because uh, there's a lecture hall behind here and water would leak into it. So this is part of the challenge of making buildings, making them last a long time. Uh, this building is approaching 70 years old, so uh, it definitely um, will need to have a major redo before it hits its 70th birthday. And uh, there's lots of uh, thoughts and ideas about how to bring this uh, firmly into the 21st century. The vertical strips that contain the windows are actually floor to ceiling. They're actually closer to what we would today call a window wall. And so, yep, we got glass here. Of course, it's shaded because of the bright sunshine. Um, and this is called a spandrel panel. And it's a sheet of metal painted. Um, and it is therefore very simple to integrate, much lighter than precast concrete, and much more susceptible to mechanical damage. Another thing we can see here is that the architect has chosen to reveal the floor lines. Actually, those aren't the superstructure floor lines. They just mirror the superstructure that's behind. So those are precast, prefabricated chunks of concrete set in place where the floors actually are but uh, there is a gap that separates the superstructure from the enclosure that we're looking at here. So it's a little bit more successful. That said, the insulating value of these windows is horrible, uh, slightly better than a tent, and that I mean slightly. The masonry walls are a lot better than a tent, but not good enough to be considered a modern building. And so that brick and block back up behind it, a total inch, 12 inches, 30 centimeters of masonry, really needs to be upgraded. So while it needs little maintenance, it's fire resistant and impact resistance, the thermal performance as designed and built uh, and the water control ability to stop rain leaks leaves much to be desired. And so these types of buildings are going to be renovated. This may look like engineering one to you, but it's actually engineering two. And we haven't got around to naming it after anybody important yet. Uh, but also what's different is that right next to, and part of engineering too, is this administrative wing. And this is where the chair and all the administrators in the department, there's not many, um, are, uh, have their offices, as well as half of the professors or something like that. And it has uh, nicer features which you can enjoy, such as this uh, beautiful fountain, uh, that in the summertime uh, brings everyone 
some cool relief. Um, and it has the same fins as we saw on parts of the physics building. Uh, although these have had major repairs done in the last few years so that they won't fall off and hit anybody. Uh, the windows, however, are the same and uh, they still have problems. But what has been done is that people have, the maintenance staff, have added a reflective film over top of this, many of these windows here because this glass, unlike the physics building, faces directly west. And that's where the sun is hot and setting in the summertime. And so it was overwhelming the air conditioning and making people very uncomfortable. So even if we look above, uh, all of those windows have their blinds closed at this time of the day. Uh, although I suppose behind the tree, you wouldn't need one. Uh, but it shows the importance of designing for shading and avoiding overly uh, glazed uh, openings that are going to be exposed to direct sunshine like this is. Yes, the glorious physics building, uh, which looks quite similar to engineering two when you look at this part of it, um, uh, is uh, one of the buildings that we need to talk about in terms of aging. And uh, you'll notice that the rust marks at that white painted concrete where it ends, yeah, that needs to be fixed. And you'll see also there are pieces of the concrete fins that are breaking off. Luckily, they're aesthetic. Unluckily, if that concrete breaks off and lands on someone's head, they can die. Um, so there's lots of work to be done. So here you can see the uh, soffit of the overhang of the physics building. Uh, and also you'll notice that if we see the glass goes right floor to ceiling, and there are spots where they have heater elements. And those are the heater elements on the inside. You can see there. And to hide them from the outside, they have a spandrel panel. So that's integrated into the architecture. The superstructure of this building being uh, cast in place concrete, you can actually see it right here. It goes right through the wall. There is no insulation between the outside and the inside. So in cold weather, what that means is that the concrete gets really cold. Um, so these spaces, um, they work uh, in terms of being aesthetically nice. Uh, they have a pretty nice workspace here, but they use a lot of heating energy to keep warm uh, in the wintertime. And they can't have the humidity very high or they will get condensation. And so that's the uh, drawback of having a poor quality glazing system. We can get the exact same aesthetic with good detailing uh, and dramatically improve this performance. Although from a design perspective, even if we could provide high performance glazing, it probably doesn't make sense to provide views for people's feet. This is the Earth Sciences and Chemistry Building, constructed somewhere in the mid-1960s and was very similar to the designs that were used for Engineering 1, Engineering 2, and the Physics Building. Now, there are obvious variations. So in this case, the front entrance has a lot of precast concrete. That is actually concrete with uh, just the stones exposed so it's called exposed aggregate concrete and you can choose your stones to be of a certain quality of color and aesthetics um, and this was made in a factory as a panel and that panel would be lifted into shape into uh, place between floors there is a joint uh, filled with sealant that allows the floors of the superstructure to move independently of this concrete cladding which is just part of the enclosure. Now this masonry here that you see it's clay brick veneer um, behind it is a 20 centimeter 8 inch concrete masonry block I mean, uh, and uh, two together bonded masonry form and assembly that is the enclosure that does everything it keeps the rain out keeps the wind out keeps the insects out keeps the students in. Now the top floor you might notice has brick of a different color. 
And that's because this building has had to have some of its brick enclosure replaced because these systems, uh, although they thought, they thought they were a good idea in the 60s, were actually pretty bad from a point of view of stopping water from leaking through. And so over time, small cracks formed and rainwater passed through. And this was before we knew that we needed separate layers to manage rainwater over the long term. So this is the uh, very common building type for the 60s. Another thing to notice are the windows. Uh, these are anodized aluminum windows. Uh, they are, the aluminum is pretty durable, will not last you over 50 years. This building is over 50 years old. However, they often will start to leak because of sealant that fails. As you can see, all the cracked up sealant, and that's probably been replaced at least once. And the glass itself will last, but again, the polymers that are used in terms of gaskets and sealants to hold the glass into place, will fail relatively quickly. This one certainly has been redone since it was built. Uh, and the comfort levels that are provided by these types of buildings no longer meet uh, modern expectations. And so they will have to be replaced and there are tens of thousands of these buildings that will need engineers and architects and contractors to design and decide on how we're gonna renovate them and bring them up to modern standards, or if we should just demolish them and build new. This is part of ESC that connects to the Biology One building. And uh, there's obviously a couple of floors that are fully occupied like a building, and underneath it is a walkway, uh, which is entirely outdoors. This creates a design challenge in that we have to figure out how to maintain the building enclosure as we go from the wall above to the underside of the floor below. This underside is called a soffit, the underside of a space above or a, uh, an occupied floor above or something like that. In this case, they've actually uh, upgraded this floor because it was a problem for comfort because it was cold in the winter time. And they've added a layer of insulation uh, and a stucco-like finish to uh, make the aesthetics match the exposed concrete. So you can see there's the exposed concrete above and if you zoom right in here you can see that they've knocked, someone has run into the insulation and it exposed it and the glass mesh that reinforces the thin layer of synthetic stucco or EIFS is now visible but it actually looks pretty good uh, from down below and it completely fulfills the purpose uh, of insulating, air tightening the underside of the floor above.